in day one of joint practices, we've heard the hype throughout the 10 days. We heard it through OTAs. We've heard it through the 10 days of training camp. We've heard it from our own beat writers. Now we're starting to hear it from beat writers of the other team. Mm -hmm. All right. Jamison Williams, JMO is going to be a problem for other teams this year. Chris, can I ask you a question? And then I want you to ask it back to me. Are you ever going to get sick of hearing the hype about Jamison Williams? Or are you sick of hearing the hype right now? No, I, I'm not sick of it. And I think it makes sense why we keep having the hype because it has been a slow burn build where it's like, oh, he was this and then he was this. And then it's like, it's still mm -hmm. there. And you can see every time he touches the ball or when he touches the ball, those electrifying times, it's like, dude, what if he could just play wide receiver? He's yet to just be a wide receiver. It's been <laughs> yeah. touches. It's been this and that. And yep. um, what we you know, what if he catches a slant and takes it? So, nope, yeah. not tired of it. I love hearing about it. And I do think there's a reason for it because he does still have a really, really high ceiling. How about you? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Uh, not like I made you ask or anything like that. I cannot get enough JMO news right now because year one. I was skeptical. And I think if you remember back, it all started with the draft. You remember that when we traded up to draft him, they're like, how are you feeling? You just got the lions traded up to get you. And he's like, I don't want to talk about it right now. You know? And, and it was just like, what's up with this guy? Yeah. And then he comes to Detroit and he has some good interviews there, but then he's hurt. He's still hurt. Right. And it takes him a while to get healthy. And then he has the gambling thing and we're sitting here and I'm just like, I didn't believe it. Year one. I didn't believe it. Year two. I believe it now. Like, mm -hmm. I really do think if this guy can stay healthy, I know now I'm being you, Chris, you're the injury guy. You're the, can they stay healthy guy? Right. But like, mm -hmm. if he can stay healthy, because that's been another issue of his is his hamstring. If he can, and ankle, if he can stay healthy, like I'm full in, I've bought it. And I don't want to say what I'm about to say next because we're in a fantasy football league together. I'm going to draft this guy in every stinking fantasy football league I can because mm -hmm. you can get him in like the 14th round right now. And I think he could be, you know, oh, he could end the year as like a wide receiver one or two in fantasy football. Like the, the, the talent is through the roof and it seems like he's doing everything short, yep. intermediate, long. I can't get enough of it. No. And this is what they said in, uh, training or in this joint practice was that Goff hit Jameson Williams who beat Cordero flat on a deep oh, ball good. for a score <laughs> flat and flop. later team period. And the lions running game had plenty of success. Williams had a strong day burning the secondary in multiple occasions multiple. and later logging a touchdown in the red zone. So, um, after burning flat, though, Williams appeared to wave to the defenders. He ran into the end zone. Oh, geez. <laughs> so there's some interesting things. There two things. Number one, this is what he's going to punt it every time he gets a touchdown, by the way. Yeah, is that That's he keeps thing. scoring. He keeps scoring. And it's keeps like, dude, uh, how? Like, he keeps the highlights. Like, this is a real thing. And then, um, yeah, then he's he's got so much energy. It's a little... I love it. Yeah. I do, but I'm almost like you said, he punts the ball, he throws the ball, he uh he he's just boy, he's us he's wound tight. Love it. <laughs> love it. Well, and not only that, but one of the skirmishes, he kind of escalated. So I guess what happened was uh, a rookie defender after the play was over went and punched the ball out of St. Brown's hands. This is coming mm. from Colton Pouncey over the athletic. And the play was clearly over. And JMO came over and took exception to that. He wanted to back up his teammates. So he then pushed that corner. And then all of a sudden you had 50 players in a pileup. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about here? But I love that. Like JMO coming to the defense of his teammates, this guy that in year one and the beginning of year two, who did JMO care about? Right. Himself. JMO. Yeah, that's it. And now it's sitting here. He's coming to the defense of his teammates. He's excited. He's ready to play. He's still got another three years on his rookie contract. Can you imagine what St. Brown and JMO, if JMO ends up being what he should have been as, what was he, pick number 12? Yeah. Something like that. Like, can you imagine what this weapon is, like what this is going to look like? If he is a consistent thousand yard receiver from this point out and a deep threat. Even if he's Des Deshaun Jackson, who is a great right. Right. like be Deshaun he, Jackson, like, be Deshaun Jackson. Like, I'm not saying Deshaun Jackson was the most polished route runner of all time. Right. But like, and I'm not saying he's bad either. He was very good. But if he can be that with his speed, 
Oh my goodness. All of a sudden, like, why isn't this the best offense in the NFL? Why? Yeah. And and that's what is it really exciting is we keep talking about their op J Mo just play play wide receiver, get those opportunities, catch yep. those because man, you see it with Tyreek Hill, you see it with these speed guys. When the offenses can really understand, and Ben Johnson, we know, of course, is gonna understand this, but like when you can push them deep and yep really run and like they run like 20 yeah. yard curls and it's it's hard to get there and develop that but what you can do is like man we need 20 yards or you know just first and 10 i don't care just yeah. hey Anytime. so you're pushing back pushing back and that's the biggest thing that we saw with jmo last year was he was the clear space guy and never really got him the ball but man you throw one ball up there Ooh. now teams they're just back, man. And and so to see that he burned the Giants twice, it was really good. And then the other guy, let me let me show you this. David Montgomery. Before you go on Montgomery yeah. and Fountain, I got something for you. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. But like we always talk about how he wasn't a team player. Last year, all he did was run go routes and block. Yeah. Like you need to be the ultimate team player to be willing to do that. And he did yes. it well. He didn't look bad doing it. So yeah. Sorry. Go to your next, go to your next point. Hit it. No, a couple guys, David Montgomery, who I think is severely underrated. I thought that when we got him, I was like, are you kidding me? We got David Montgomery. He, yeah. he had a, a really good game. Um, and then Jefferson, who we continue to talk about at this, at the running back position, continued his upward trajectory, getting reps with the second team. And there he is right there showing the, uh, the, the burst. And that's what Thank we keep you. hearing about with with Jefferson is he's got a burst. So when you see Montgomery Jefferson thoughts on that, yeah, I, my thoughts on that on yeah. on Jefferson with the burst yes. is I didn't know he had it, and yes, right. it tells me like we always see like when when good players go and put in work in the off season. Even if they're second team players, we hear about it. We heard about it when Levi on Wuzurike came in jacked, right? Like we knew the difference in his body type, even yep. though he wasn't playing for us continuously at the time when he came into camp this summer. Uh, guys like Jefferson, Jamar Jefferson at the running back position, running back five, running back six, something like that. If he just went to work like crazy on his body to improve his speed, to improve his physical ability, like you're not going to hear about it, but he probably did. Like he probably did. Otherwise you're not going to see the burst or maybe for the first time he's actually healthy. I don't know. What I do know is he showed a little bit of that pop, not, I wouldn't say burst, but a little bit of pop, a little bit of that it factor when he was actually healthy his first couple of years. If he has the burst now, it's really exciting. Like I, I like the idea of could he even be an upgrade as RB three? Nothing against Craig Reynolds, love him, but if we could have an RB three that could come in and have burst, because Greg Reynolds can do a lot. Craig Reynolds can do a lot. Burst is not a word you will use with Craig Reynolds. That's right. And now I did see all the beat writers and everybody that's at camp constantly or consistently. They had to do a little predictor, and they have Craig Reynolds making the team, and so. Yep. He keeps yep. surprising me. He, like you said, he's really good, but at the same time, uh, that burst and explosiveness would be great to bring somebody in um, and have that. So um, I saw that same thing, yeah. and half and half were uh, Jamar Jefferson. And yeah. last week, it was like nobody thought he was going to make the team, and then a week passes, and all of a sudden, at six to five, they think he's going to make the team. He's going to make the team. I know. Yep. So I love it. I love it.